episode of the show is all about culture. We all come from somewhere. We have a community, a language, something that we learned from the place where we come from. Do you have a language? How do you say good morning in your traditional language? I come from a culture, and I'm sure you two come from one. Are you proud of your culture? Are you proud of your roots? What are you doing to portray that cultural background that you come from? Is it through music? Is it through dressing? Is it through art? My guest on today's episode of the show does wonders with a paintbrush. She is a multiple award winning artist. She is a paint artist. Somebody who found her craft when she was only nine years old. Today, she has gone to paint top celebrities. She's here to share her story with us. Welcome to my studio. Um, just want to talk a little bit about what I do and why I do it. Uh, the work that I do typically reflects beautiful Africa culture. And um, for as long as I can remember, I've always loved being an African. I was nine years old when I left Cameroon and moved to London. And people always ask me, but why do you still want to paint all these things in Africa, Cameroon, Nigeria? I don't know. It's just something that is, I guess, my calling. You know, I love being an African. I want to show, you know, the world how beautiful um, Africa culture is and also a, a way to have people travel to see for themselves. You know, there's such a range of foods, such a range of languages, such a range of, you know, different cultures. I painted in the beginning just to, you know, getting all the techniques, there are other paintings that show more detail, other paintings that do, you know, different things. But, you know, initially I was painting just to get the, 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 the grasp of what painting is, to get different techniques, to, to understand colours. But later on, you know, I wanted my paintings to have specific meanings, like to, to really be meaningful. So when you put a painting, you know, it's like, okay, it's taking you back home. Or, oh my God, the colours are beautiful and it makes me want to do this, you know, it's, or all the antiqua symbols which are meaningful you know these other paintings are about you know hope and beauty you know it's of these antiqua symbols which derive traditionally from ghana but they're also all, all the way around west africa as well but they are derived from ghana they all mean something so beautiful so you know every little you know aspects of the things that i want to do that i do i want them to tie back to africa and and for for, for people to, to enjoy the cultures within Africa. Africa is my, is, my, is my inspiration and I tend to travel home and to other African countries to, to see. What I paint is typically what I see. So I could be walking on the street and see a moment and capture that moment and then want to replicate it. I could be walking, I could be going to the market and seeing a woman walking with the baby on the back. Oh, I want that moment. The reason why my work resonates with a lot of people is because it's something that they could have seen. It's something that they may have seen in the village or in the city in, in Africa. Or, you know, for me, a secret that I've, it's not a secret, it's just a, a way of being, just being a, accepting of others, being authentic. I actually go by this motto called um, authenticity is everything. If you follow me on social media, you'll see that I, I, I say that quite often, how being authentic is everything. Yes, yeah, so whilst I am Cameroonian, I am also in a way British because I grew up in London. 
right? Because I, I got a lot of the, of the British um, ness, you know. So I, I cannot say that I'm 100% Cameroonian. That would not be authentic because I did not really grow up in Cameroon. So my, my authenticity is being Cameroonian, yes, and knowing the culture and loving the culture, but also being from England. And now, you know, where I travel, where I am now, I'm also move, moving that into my being. So my motto in life is about being as authentic as you possibly can, because, you know, everyone is a unique, beautiful being. And by accepting your authenticity, you allow others to enjoy and accept you. So that is my little secret that I carry around with me everywhere, being as authentic as you possibly can be. Every artist has to have their own style. And I love hats. I love jewelry. Um, I love interesting, fabulous clothes. So <laughs> I guess, why not? When I do exhibitions, I could have 20 people come to talk to me about and my work because I look interesting, because I look cool, because I look so, of course. You know, it's something that enhances you, pulls in people who are inquisitive about what you're wearing. And so, yeah, but uh, apart from that, I mean, I love, I love being creative in, in how I put my things together. As an artist, I look at composition as a whole, and um, it's always nice to have something that pops, something that is going to be like, ooh, I love styling myself. I like styling others. I actually used to style people. But then that's another thing which I can't do really, you know, painting takes a lot of me. So it's, I love being able to, to create in a variety of ways. So of course, when I dress, I would dress in a way I would create, I would try to create art with myself in the way that I dress. It's been amazing um, over the years to, to have gathered the momentum that I have gathered and um, people are now really loving you know, and wanting to actually have paintings of, 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 of Africa, something that will take them back home, something that is just meaningful. I continue to aspire to want to do even more. I aspire to want to continue producing, you know, beautiful work, enriching work, you know, that would continue inspiring as many people as I possibly can. Hey Shiri. Hello. You always bring the magic in the room. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having me here. And it never gets old talking to you, Shiri. <laughs> it doesn't, does it? There's always something <laughs> new, refreshing, inspiring about having you on the show. Thank you. Thank you and so you much. And you carry your culture. Yes. On your sleeves yes. everywhere you go. Yes, I do. I do. I'm very proud. Cameron, like I've said a hundred and one times. <laughs> Before we start our show, yeah. we want our guests to pledge. We mm. have a pledge on the show. Okay. And the pledge is just you simply looking in the camera over there and making a promise to us that you would have fun, mm -hmm. that you would be as open as you can, mm -hmm. okay? And that you hope that you can be able to inspire somebody out there. So take it away. I, Shiri Achu, pledge to have a lot of fun to um, to be as open as I can be on this show and to inspire others to pursue their dreams. Okay, thank you for that. So what are you wearing today? Today I am wearing togo, a little bit of togo with black. What That's is the it. beat? Is that this, beat from... This is beats that I bought recently in Cameroon, actually. Oh! Yes, yes, I bought wow. this. I went to the market, I saw them and... I had five minutes to go. To, I was running to the airport and I just had to get them. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's really amazing. Thank you. So, Shiri, how do you come up with your style? When I look at you, there's always something different, something new, magical. Ah, thank you. I love the way you put your pieces together. Thank and I never you. seem to get it. Thank you. Well, maybe that's just the artistic in me, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> Are you sure you don't have like some designing background, something that well, you're not telling us? Well, I am also an architect. Okay. So I guess that has to play with, you know, designing and putting things together. Um, yeah, and I've doubled in some interior design and I do. I have actually styled people before in London. Okay. I used to do styling. Um, but I found it a little bit stressful because what I thought 
was looking amazing on some people. They were like, hmm, can we just, so it's like, okay. But it's, it's a great, it's great when people, when my clients loved, you know, the outcome, but there were some of my clients who were a little bit, so, but art is my thing anyway. I love right. painting. <laughs> have you had people come to you and compliment you about the way you dress? Yes, yes, like, yes. Like, have they just said, are you an artist? Like, have yes. they just guessed like yes. that? Yes, 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 mm. I have, you have. How yes. does that make you All feel? The time. It makes me feel good. It makes me feel like I am, I am, what I do is reflective in everything that I do. And that's a great thing. And so I want us to talk about the full circle. Mm. I know we had talked about that sometime when you did your virtual art exhibition. Yes. You had Angie Stone. Yes, yes. On your virtual art exhibition, girl. Yes. The Angie Stone. The Angie Stone. <laughs> it was awesome. Um, so I, I had done a painting for her, which she called me on stage to sort of embrace me and say it's wonderful and thank me. And, and then she said, you know, you have passed to all my concerts from here on, you know. And then I had this virtual exhibition due to COVID and then I wasn't able to, to you know, have my normal, my normal annual exhibition. So typically I would go every year to a new country. Okay. But because of COVID, I wasn't able to. And that's the reason why I had the online exhibition. And I was able to invite her for my online exhibition. And she, and she came. And she came. We had a conversation online. She told me that she has a painting in her living room on top of a piano. Wow. And she loves it. And yeah, it was, it was great. I mean, it's online. You can see it. If you go to day, I think day seven of the online exhibition, you'll be able to see it. And that's on Shiri at your That's Shiri at your Art. Yes. Yes. On, on Facebook. My fan, on, on Facebook. Yes. If okay. we go capitalized Shiri at your Art, mm -hmm. you'll be able to see day seven is the interview with Angie Stone. Okay. So how did Angie get to know that you did a painting of her? Um, because she, because I presented it to her. Okay. Yeah. On what occasion? So it was her concert. So Angie Stone is a bit of a... I'm like, trying to get it because the Angie Stone, she's not an ordinary person yeah, that you would yeah, just yeah. meet every day and say, hey, I have a painting of you. Yes, yes. So, so Angie, how was that meeting So made? Angie Stone um, was the very first album that I had bought mm. when I was a teenager. Okay. So I paint with her music. So she means a lot to me. Mm. She has inspired my growth. She's inspired me when I paint. So, you know, when I heard that she was in town, I wanted to do her a special gift. So when I went, um, I did. And, you know, they, they invited me up. Well, when she saw the painting, she said, oh my God, we have to come up. And, you know, she gave oh. me in front of like, in the middle of her concert. So it was, yeah. What was this concert? Today? This was somewhere in... Virginia, I can't remember exactly the location, but it was somewhere, yeah. So you got a ticket for yes. Angie Stone concert yes. because yes. you wanted to meet yes. her? Yes, yes, yes. So yes. did you actually like meet her team and get a pass or permission to meet yes. her? Or did you yes. just yes. see yes. the crowd? Yes, I got, I got, I got her, um, her team. That's how I'm able to contact her mm. for the online exhibition and okay. things like that, yes. Yes, okay. so I went backstage, I, I mingled with her and yeah. How was that experience for you? I know you're a celebrity uh -huh. from Cameroon already, but how was it like for you meeting an, a world-class celebrity like Angie Stone? Amazing. Like I said, because she was the very first uh, musician's album that I had ever, ever bought, it meant a lot to me, you know. And I told her, she went, oh my goodness me, you know, because imagine like the very first album that like, you save your money as a teenager you know, and then you finally buy the album and then you're finally meeting her and she's embracing you. She's saying, oh my God, your work is amazing. It's it's full circle. It's, it was wonderful. Oh my God. Yeah. I can only imagine yeah. the joy that you had. Yeah. And so you and her kept this relationship yes. that's yes. been going on and on and on. Yes. How does it feel that your art is able to touch hearts all over the world? It's amazing. It's amazing. It's, um, I thank God for the gift um, and I thank God particularly for the love that he instilled in me. So my paintings away from Angie Stone and po other portraits that I do, my paintings typically depict Africa culture. Okay. Um, I, I love to, to, to showcase the beautiful, you know, different um, aspects of Africa culture. Okay. So what I do is every year I'd go to a new country and I'll exhibit the paintings and people from different parts of the world will get to know about the Maasai, about the Yoruba, about the, you know, Bamenda people. They'll get to know somehow through the paintings. And that really inspires me when 
when those people buy those paintings, for example, when I had an exhibition in Australia, and this this Australian bought the ba Baffle to pe you know painting, oh, wow. and now he has that painting in his in his he's a professor, you know, maybe he had it at home or in his or his 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 workspace. But people ask him, so what is this? You know, who are these people? And then he will yeah. explain, and then they get to know a little bit about Baffle to people. Uh -huh. That is what makes my heart sing. Uh -huh. That is what makes me um so fulfilled in doing what i do so where did this love for painting come from i know you said it started when you were nine years yeah. old yeah but for yeah. it to grow to this extent mm. and for you to back all these awards and have all these recognitions mm. where did this whole inspiration come from at that early age i don't my say my brother told me that i found the tools in the back of the house okay so it just so happened that apparently there were tools and I found them and I knew, the thing is, I knew that I had to paint. I knew that it was, I, I hadn't seen anyone painting okay. and I don't know where it came from. I guess it's just something that God downloaded like he usually does, you know, yeah. he says, okay, my daughter, you will paint, eh? And then <laughs> <laughs> this way you will go to other countries and explain, eh? So, so I think I get the downloads yeah. and then I just execute them. Right. How was it like with your parents at home? Were they supportive? Or yes, they, yes, yes. At yes. that young age, yes. I know that you yes. had to finish school because yes. that was like a prerequisite. For oh you yes, to do every whatever African, you wanted of to course, do. of course. So, how was the support like at home? Um, amazing. My mother is amazing. My father is too, but my mother is particularly amazing because she encouraged it. Okay. She said, "I'll get you a teacher to teach you about perspectives and other things." You oh, know, wow. she yes, yeah, she did. Um, my father says, okay, my daughter, yes, you're doing very good, very nice, very nice. But my mother actually, you know, did something to actually, to hone in the skill and, and to, to, you know, to push it forward. So it was great. You know, I, I had a very good supportive, um, you know, and I, being a middle child, I was not expected to, to, to lead the others. You know, I was not the eldest to say, okay, look, everybody must follow this example. So I could be a little bit more, you know, do what I want. <laughs> okay, so you had all the support that you yeah. needed. Did you ever face any challenges in your career as an artist? Oh, yes, of course. Every time I go to have an exhibition, I cry at the end of it. I cry, yes, of joy because, you know, these people have also... No, I take that. Let me rephrase that. When I exhibit where it's challenging financially, because exhibitions okay. are not cheap, you have to somehow pay for the gallery space. You have to pay for this. You have to carry your work over. You have to do, you have to buy the frames. You have to buy, you know, so I do prints of my work. So because I want them to be affordable and um, transportable because I travel mm -hmm. with the painters. So it becomes very expensive. And a lot of the times I find that I spend all my money and then I'm broke apart from when the start, people start buying the paintings when I have finally gotten there and then, you know, people have purchased and that's making my heart sing. And then my, I get back to life, but I find that it's so expensive um, doing what I do, like having to travel. So this year, I will let the, should I let the bag out? Should I tell you what I'm Let going? the cat out of the bag. Should yes, I do bring that? it on, girl. Bring that? it on. So this year, I am traveling This is an exclusive, right? Yes. <laughs> I'm going to South Africa. Okay. Yes. All right. I've never been. So I'm very excited because I haven't. I've always, and this is going to be what print? Version? This is 43 in print. 43 in print. Yes. Reminding you that she has had. So started on 35 I started with in 35 in print London, 36 in print DC, the Australia, Toronto. And, and it's been different countries it's all been, the Yes, time. each one is a different country. So this year is South Africa. So before we even get to talking a little bit more about South Africa, because yeah. I'd like you to throw more light on that. Yeah. What has the experience going from all these countries? Mm -hmm. What has it taught you? What, did um, you? what did you get from each of those experiences? It has taught me, or it has made me love people more. Okay. It has it has shown me how to approach and with different types of people. It has, you know, showed me that the world is such a big place and I'm just okay. this little spectacle, you know, so therefore don't take my life too seriously. Don't be too, because I'm just this little speck in the spectrum of things. Um, but overall, it has shown me that people love my work, which is a great thing mm -hmm. to take, you know, after traveling to all these places. And it's a good encouragement for me to keep doing what I do. Yeah. And so I know that you take your culture to mm -hmm. these people. What do you take back from them? 
what I have take, been some of I, the most touching things or most memorable things that you have taken from each of those places you visited? Okay. So I did not do an imprint exhibition in, in Thailand, but I have exhibited in Thailand before. Okay. And the food. Mm. I take back in Thailand, I take back the food. Mm. The food is amazing. Mm. Hong Kong. I have not done an imprint exhibition there, but when I travel, we're talking about traveling or particularly the exhibitions. What you get from them, because you take your culture. Okay, so it should what be do you about take culture. So the music, you know, the music, the style, the food, particularly the food, and, you know, the music. Tokyo, I, I, I should not talk about Hong Kong because I did not exhibit there. Okay. But yes, I always take back. There's always something to take back from a different um, culture. Welcome back, everybody, to Spot That with Gwendy on the show. We talk to people, personalities, and professionals from all around the world, from all walks of life, who have a story, an experience, a journey to share. My guest in today's episode is multiple award winning painter, originally from Cameroon, moved a little bit with the parents because they traveled a lot across the world from diplomatic home, right? Mm -hmm. And then she landed in the United States. But what you don't know about her is that she is an architect. Mm -hmm. So was becoming an architect like an added thing to your art? Why did you choose that field? I actually wanted to be both. Okay. So right now, I think I'm living my best life okay. <laughs> because I am being an artist and an architect. I I saw my uncle when he visited us in London many years ago and I saw him roll. He rolled the pieces of paper on the table and he was designing and drawing. I'm saying, yeah, I want to be like you one day, you know, mm -hmm. because it's creative, it's designing. So I I knew that I was always going to paint. I knew that it was something that you couldn't, you know, always find a way to paint, even if I was doing a, being a doctor or, in, or anything else. I knew that I would still find my way to paint. So I wanted to go study something. Um, exactly. So I went to study architecture seven years. And then when I finished, um, I was actually painting some of the buildings that I was designing at university. Wow. Yes, yes, yes. I painted some buildings. Um, and then, yeah, so I guess I guess I always wanted to be both. Okay. Yes. So if you had to choose between architecture, what a question! Are you really going to ask me that question? If somebody you have to choose, <laughs> which one would you choose? Because I know architecture probably gives you more of the cash. Architecture is, is more of your passion too. So, 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 you have to choose the two. so I couldn't. I can't live without not being able to paint. You can't leave. I cannot. I cannot live without not being able to paint. Wow. But I can live without doing architecture. So I guess that answers the question. Just answer the question. Because you're confusing us. Like, just tell us. I choose painting. I can't. Any day, because I also love architecture. I love the security it also brings. You know, architecture, I know that I'm going to get a paycheck at the end of, you know, with right. art, you know, we have an exhibition, one person may buy a painting or, you know, you just don't know um, what you're going to get after spending everything. So it's, but at least with architecture, you're still designing. I still love designing beautiful buildings, you know, going through the whole process and meeting clients, amazing people with money um, who can <laughs> help you live a good life. So I like that aspect of architecture. But um, to say, yes, I, being an artist is my first love, I guess, because I wanted to paint when I was nine. Okay. So I guess that's a deeper passion. That was a long answer. <laughs> You choose painting <laughs> over architecture. But I love being but an architect too. That's what I'm saying. Yes. But not only that. Not only that. I could be designing something at three o'clock in the morning because I'm enjoying it. Okay. Not only that. I also have a passion for it. Okay. Yeah. All right. So would you say that this is a lucrative job? I mean, in terms of encouraging others who love painting to get into it, would you say, hey, get into it because there's the mola in it? Mm. Or get into it because you love it so much. You want mm. to put a message out. You want to do this and that. Okay, so with art, please do not get into art if you think, well, if you are extremely gifted and very different and you have a great amount of luck and, you know, then art is your thing because you can sell a painting for 10 million and then that's your life set. But if you're like others who have to work and work and have exhibitions and sometimes 
you may or may not sell. Mm -hmm. It gets very hard. There is a, there is there is a reason why they say that um, the struggling artist because artists do struggle. You know, you do a painting, you think it's amazing, you put it out there, and mm -hmm. no one looks at it. Everyone says, "What is this?" Is you know, because it's expensive, or people I mean, just don't have. <clears throat> You don't have culture, the appreciation. Don't have the um, yes, you, it, I guess it depends where you are. Some people may have the appreciation but still not like your work. You know, I've been blessed. The other way around for me, I sell prints at quite reasonable prices. And I was exhibiting at the House of Parliament in London, I remember. And the lady, it, it, she's a lady who came and she said, I told her the price of the painting and she wrote me a check of slightly more. I'm like, wow, not slightly, actually a lot more. I'm like, wow. That's like how she much? She goes, she said, she said, oh, because it's worth a lot more. So I was very impressed wow. and I'm very grateful because, you know, sometimes if you have people equate the value of what something is to the amount they spend on it. Right. So she wanted to give me the what she felt was the right, you know, so I was blessed in that sense for me. But most often artists will struggle, mm -hmm. you know, so really, really, really you go into art when you love it, when you know that you can sleep, when you know that, you know, even if you don't eat and you're doing your craft, you're, you're still going to be blessed and happy, you know? Have you ever wanted to just drop the brush? No. Maybe because of financial challenges or what you go through, traveling with paintings, no sales. No. Have you ever felt like, oh, I've got enough, I've had enough of No. It. I'm going to drop this No, brush. no, no, because I have a lot of people who write to me and say, well done, you're inspiring me. Can you please mentor me? Can you do this? Can you do that? And that is all. I feel, I feel I'm obligated somehow to those people now to keep going to keep you know and that's not the reason why i do it but it's if, if it's inspiring others and you know it's motivating and enriching you know wanting other young girls to pursue their their passions i think that i feel like i i need to keep doing this mm -hmm. yeah let's talk about your award mm. you have an award that you just received yes very prestigious award tell yes. us about that briefly it, um, it's a cultural award from the Prince George's um, Advisory Board County. Um, but yeah, <laughs> it was it was amazing because yeah. I was escorted and told that I was receiving this award, and it means a lot to be recognised, you know, by the community. Um, it means a lot to, to you know that I'm I'm doing something which is positive, you know, um, promoting culture and. And, and it's great that people are recognizing that culture is so beautiful. I mean, I used to go around always dressed in my regalia and people used to say, oh, but it's great that more and more people are appreciating culture. It's for me, it's, it's, it's a great thing that, you know, when I see people, you know, not just, the funny thing is, whilst I'm coming and I really don't myself in, I also love it when I see a South African dressed in South African, you know. Yeah. I love it when I see a Kenyan. Like, I, I love it when I see people who are proud of their heritage and they wear it and they're part of who they are exactly i just love that so um i i am glad that more and more people are seeing and appreciating that aspect of you know being proud of of your heritage you have a challenge coming up i do i know you don't want to talk about that challenge, i do but we promise that we'll just let them in on a little, little bit, bit sure so just briefly tell us what is this challenge, challenge. all about Okay. With your friend from South yes. Africa. Yes, yes. So I um I recently did a, a photo shoot with a friend of mine, um, Jessica Mbangeni. She's from South Africa. And some of the photographs you may see floating on Facebook. Um so that um is it's the photographs are really of me dressed in my full um togo mm -hmm. and of her also dressing her South African regalia. Okay. And so the challenge is actually for people to team together. So if you're Nigerian, team with Kenyan. If you're Kenyan, team with Ugandan. If you're Ugandan, team with, you know, and take your, your fiercest pictures together and send that, send that to me because um, in about three months, I'll be having an online exhibition of the paintings that Jessica and I have taken. You may see two pictures, but you have not seen anything yet <laughs> once the exhibition is, is, is there. So I would also want to include a couple of the um, five of the, of the pictures of the, from the challenge. You know, if, if people take to the challenge and send really amazing pictures, then we're going to choose the best five to include in the exhibition. So is it like a culture swap? It's in a way, no, this we are is encouraging people to swap cultures and see no, what it looks like and we take are, pictures. We are encouraging we're encouraging people to wear their 
to wear wear your pride, wear, wear your, your pride, wear your pride, and stand with your other okay. country. Wear your culture, with wear pride your culture with pride alongside with your so so. Yeah, so wear your full regalia, the mm-hmm. traditional wear. Yeah. Have your friends, your brother, your sister, your mother, your son, wear, you know, or your or someone else with a different culture mm-hmm. to wear their own, you know, regalias. And then you take a picture together. Okay. CS picture together. And then that hopefully will be included in the exhibition. Welcome back to Spotlight with Gwendy. On the show, we talk to people, personalities, and professionals from all over the world whose stories surely should inspire you because of the challenges, the journeys, and all whatnot, so that you can be hopefully impacted and most importantly, believe that your dreams are valid. Joining me today in studio, as you have seen, she's been sharing her story with us, Shiri Archer Art, a young girl, nine years old. And that was when her fire for painting started. She just found paint brushes at random at home, mm-hmm. fell in love with it. Today, she is also an architect and a painter. And we challenged her to find out if she had to choose between these two, which one would she choose? And she was indecisive. She said she loves art, but she loves the architecture money. So. <laughs> that's life right i guess we go for what really lights our soul but the truth is she mixes all that beautifully so shiri what lights your soul up about what you do what lights my soul what makes my heart smile um when people from a different culture completely different culture um buy my work oh. because Uh, It means they appreciate my culture. It means they appreciate culture. It means they're going to place it in their house and they're going to explain to the next person who comes, who who is inquisitive enough to want to find out, you know, what is that? And then they're going to explain. And that's one extra person in the world who now knows about the painting, about the culture, or whether it was the the, the the Yoruba painting or the Kenyan painting or the Cameroonian painting. That is now one person who has learned about something else, which about a different culture, which is makes my heart smile. Now, before we go, mm. we always want you to end the show with a power word, an inspirational word that hopefully somebody out there would feel empowered by. Okay. Um, so with me and and I think with with a lot of people, if you listen keenly, um, we are given direction. God, I will call my God, God, right? And he speaks with me. So it's, it's for me, it's listen to, to the messages that are being downloaded to you and take it. You know, once you have been directed to do something, you know, take it and, and know that you can accomplish it. Work hard to all the little girls or, you know, all, all the, you know, people in Cameroon who write to me and say, you know, can I mentor them? Um, yeah, it's it's great to 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 follow through with what you're inspired, what you love to do, because right. that's number one. When you when you do what you love to do, you you live a fulfilled life. You 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 sleep at four o'clock and you don't even you're not even tired, but you know you have to sleep. So number one is to follow, you know, what your heart tells you that you should do. And then, of course. One has to work very hard. It's not just that you're going to sit down and think, okay, it's going to come to me. You have to, you know, put in all the work that you have to put in in order to get exactly. Because if you could imagine that you're going to be painting and being in this gallery in two years or four years or five years, you have to start making the steps to get to that place. So, um, and have faith. Know that you will accomplish it. Just know that, you know, whatever you... I think you say this a lot. Whatever you think you can be, you can you actually think it. You, you can, can do it. it. Exactly. Do it, exactly. And thank you so much for stopping by our brand new home. Yes. Yes. This, is <laughs> this awesome. has been a big dream for me. It's and awesome. it's heavy. I'm so proud of you, by the way. I think you I should tell grow. you that. <laughs> I think I should tell you that I'm so proud of you. Thank what you're you. accomplishing. Thank you. You know, promoting others. Thank you. You're inspirational oh. to many. Oh. Thank you for doing and being you. 
Oh, thank you, Shiri. You're going to make me cry. But thank you for being mm. on our show today. Um, I guess we can touch now because COVID is always <laughs> gone. But thank you guys so much for stopping by. We do hope that you were inspired today. Here we talk to people, personalities, and professionals from all over the world who have a story that could inspire, that could empower. Hopefully, this story inspired you to go after your dreams. Hey, don't forget to follow us on all of our social media, subscribe to our YouTube, turn on the notification, and join the family. So if you've already done that, welcome home. This is home. See you next week. God bless you. Bye-bye. Thank you.